This is embarrassing. We even scheduled a call. Yo. Yo, how's it going? No, I like yeah, you. Yeah, right, right. Give me two minutes. I'll just in the car, Z. We'll do different angles. Yeah, I'll replace it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a real pro. Yeah, like yeah, three, yeah. Multicam. So we're going to go like straight to the beginning of your car. BMW E24. <laughs> BMW in the house? It wasn't the first BMW. Dad had a couple of V30s before, um, a 318i and a 320i. This was the upgrade. Prior to this, he had a late 70s Cadillac Seville. That was a glorious car as well, metallic brand. But he always said he wanted the E24. So he, when he bought two, three BMs already from this dealership, he told him he was going to look out for an E24. He wanted a red one, and that was it. He wanted a bit more luxury with the E24. Yeah, the E30 was a car to aspire to. I mean, you know, every anyone driving a Sierra Cavalier just looked up to E30 drivers. And the E24 was just literally the next step up. In 1989, I think the list price for one brand new was just shy of 40 grand. I mean, Dad used the car evenings, weekends, that sort of stuff. He used to do a few road trips in it. And around 99, he changed cars. He kept the E24, he just kept it parked up in the garage. And it was around 2007, I suggested to Dad, look, give me the keys, so to speak. And he needed a few cosmetics. Yeah, paint was a little bit faded, started to show his age a little bit. And he goes, yeah, go for it. So that was it, 2007, I got the keys. Just sort of recommissioned it a little bit, changed the fluids, a few bits and pieces here and there. And um, to late 2007, early 2008, stripped it down and got it painted and brought it back to its original glory. Okay. We'll, we'll get to the mod mod parts in a bit. So before you took ownership of the car, what, what were you driving then? My driving experience, I um, passed my test in 97, um, but I got my first car in 98. Um, and for the first sort of year, 18 months, I was messing around hot hatches, Nova SR, 205 GTI, Renault 5 Turbo, that sort of stuff, went through them all. And... I ended up actually driving my mum's E30 for a little bit when the Renault 5 Turbo broke down. And if you had a Renault 5 Turbo, you know they break down. So I was in my mum's E30 more than I was in my own car. And I always had an interest in BM. Me and my dad used to go to the car shows in his E24. I always had an interest in BMs, but I didn't really sort of have an interest in owning or driving one, which I wanted to do the hot hatches. But once I started driving my mum's E30, it was like, damn. This is, this is how a car should feel. And I was 19 and a bit, and it's when I bought my first D30. It was um, Dolphin Grey, 325 by Sport, Tech 1. And um, <clears throat> that unfortunately got written off by a good friend of mine. If you're watching this, hi Mitch, cheers. I still remember that night, broke my arm in the process. Went through a series of Tech 1s, Tech 2s, um, Alpina C2 convertible. And then I started moving on to E30 M3s, had a couple over the years. Both were sort 
they were cheaper cars back then. You could get away with doing modifications. And both were engine swapped. One with an M30 turbo. One had an S50 B32 thrown in it. That one was actually a um, Chocotto. In hindsight, that was a bit of a mistake. Um, and that was that, really. But yeah, then you started progressing onto other cars, E36s, E46s. And you just a a steady progression through the BMW. But the E24 was always there. It was when I knew from a very young age that this car would be a keeper. We'd, we'd never said it. Yeah, it crossed my dad's mind once and he always made a couple of offers for it over the years and I think it was once and you know, it, it kind of crossed my mind but no, it's, it's something that you consider for about a nanosecond and then you think, no, 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 I'm being stupid here. We used to sneak it out of the garage while my parents were going out for dinner in the evenings, 15, 16 years old at the time, and wasn't driving anywhere too far. It was just you know, a quick spin around the block. And I remember the first time I was actually given the key to drive it properly, and that was after I passed my test. Dad said, come on, off you go. Just go for a drive. So, like I said before, it was, yeah, it was the first car I drove. It was the first car I drove after I got my license. So, it's too many memories. Going back to would I sell it and stuff like that, no. The memories, there's far too many memories. There's about 2003, 2010, um, decided to sort of rebuild the sh suspension at the time. I was thinking, well, you know what, it could do with lowering. So that's what we did. Um, got a set of springs, HRs, fresh dampers, which were Saks gas dampers. And uh, the wheels that were running in there were ACT three piece force wheels, eight and a half and nine and a half by 17. And the centers are forged, nice quality wheel. Other modifications, there's not been too much. Um, the front spoilers of an M635 CSI. Inside, a few years back, about 2014, front seats were starting to show a little bit of wear on them. I was thinking, what do we do? Recolor them, re dye them, re trim them. The dilemma is you re trim the front seats, will never match the back seats. They, haven't, they wouldn't have aged the same way. So the decision was made, let's re trim the whole lot. Went through about 10, 15 different highs trying to find a grain that I was happy with. A nice leather, something with a nice grain to it like it should be. I found the leather and I decided to throw the Recaros in at the same time. Audio has been upgraded. Um, there was lots of discussion of what to do and through a good friend of mine, Nick Soho, I got in touch with Shaky, the studio in car. And Shaky, the top bloke, recommend him 100%. He knew how how much the car meant to me. He knew I was very, very cautious about who worked on it. There's not many people that work on the car. What we did, I had some spare door cards and door panels, and he made me some nice door builds. Got some six-inch speakers up there, tweezers mounted at the top of the door. A couple of amps, um, Audison Bit 10 sound processor, a um, couple of subs in the back. And it's, it is pure quality SQ. It plays loud, but it is SQ sound quality. And again, when you're going on your long drives through Europe, anywhere up and down the UK, the audio is important and I've, you know, I love my music, as we most do, most of the passion for music and this delivers. Well, what kind of what kind of tunes do you play then? Say you're going for a cruise down London City, what are you playing? Well, my, my playlist has to be the most warped, distorted, peculiar, or someone said to me, fucked up playlist ever. There is no specific music I listen to. Everything. So you could have like Snoop Dogg and then Dolly Parton comes on and something like that. Yeah. Yeah, nothing wrong with it. Dolly Parton, but Jolene, Jolene playing. <laughs> I do get some strange looks when it's playing loud, but nah, everything. Have you got an actual <laughs> favourite? You know, some people have got like that favourite cruise tune that, you know, they just put on replay, replay. Is there anything you got or is it all just a mix of everything? There is one song and it's a song from the French version of Taxi. And that is just a cruising tune, and it's just nice. It kind of puts you in the zone, really, when you're driving, listen to that. But that, that's one of my songs. In terms of the engine, there's, is, is, are there any engine modifications done to increase the power or anything like that, or is it just stock? Engine-wise, the car's completely stock, completely standard, left it alone. Um, a few years back, decided to top and tail it, just pull the head off, see what's going on, same with the bottom end, 
and it was at that time I thought let's let's go for it with the engine bay, let's put it back to how it should be as a factory. And it was on over a series of months with a good friend of mine, a guy called David Blackwood. Uh, a lot a few people might know his car, he's got a stunning six through five CSI Highline, Nagara Grey. And we just decided to sort of let's detail it, have all the reproduction engine bay stickers, the warning stickers done, what I do with them anyway. The thinking behind that was the engine bay was pretty presentable anyway. But over the years I've done a few show and shines picked up a few trophies here and there but the one that I really wanted to do was um, Concours Concours is it's about originality and presentation you actually lose points for non-original parts or modifications so to speak I thought thought, you know what I've made a few changes to the car be it the wheels the suspension and the seats I thought if I'm going to do going to Concours I really need to up my game so that was the decision let's go for it in the engine bay and once I did the bay about two years later went to my first concourse, it was BMW Car Club one, and got best in class, and that was nice, it was nice to see that. You've got a trophy of that, haven't you? Yeah, I've got the trophy for that, there's a few other trophies, um, a few years back, one best classic, I've been a fest in Holland, Santa Pod, a few shows, BMW shows there, and retro shows. So, just, just take us to your shelf then, let's have a look. What, right now? Yeah, 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 just walk over to the shelf. You, you want to see my shelf right now? Yeah. Let's go, it's all 50 yards. There's a few of the trophies. Bottom shelf is all car related stuff. Top shelf is all football related stuff and a couple of bits of memorabilia. But here you go. Can you see that one? Yeah, yeah. Not from Concord 2008, BMW Car Club. That was a nice one. This one's quite cool. Um, that was West Side Show and Shine, runner up, best runner up to BMW 2016. Uh, there's a Bimmer Festival one, German show, some other stuff there. But yeah, there's a few cool trophies there. Oh, something to keep there. I've always said I wouldn't keep stuff like that in the living room, and eventually it will make its way into the office. Winning these trophies and all that stuff, and it, it's not what the car's about. It, it's nice to get the recognition. The car does has a bit of a following on online, social media, that sort of stuff these days. But as I said, it's never about winning your trophies and Instagram likes. You know, I've got a few followers actually set up a specific Instagram page for the car. Just wanted to split the personal life with the car completely. Yeah, stopping at petrol stations can be a bit of a chore. You do get people talk to you about it. So you know, no disrespect to anyone, I'm quite happy to talk about my car all day with any, you know, another enthusiast. But you just sometimes want to jump in the car and drive. Which is why you know, when I do take the car for a drive in the UK, it tends to be sort of in the evenings, which is a little bit quieter. And, you know, you just get to drive it and be at peace and enjoy it for what it is. What is it about the actual driving part of it? I mean, you've got the looks, you've got the sound system, the performance is there when you need it. But w there must be something that says, you know what, I'm not going to take the F31. I'm taking the E24 into the city today. I'm taking it for that 300 mile trek. You feel connected. It's an 80s BMW, and anything made in the 80s was a driver's car. It's a car that you feel connected with. And you can still press on if you want to. Uh, the controls are a little bit heavier. The window switch is a little bit firmer. You still get a few little noises coming from the car, little creaks, rattles. Just an old car. And that's there's a certain charm about it. I just, just love driving it can't explain it but you just feel at one with the car to feel connected the car has soul it has a soul and if you've got a passion that passion and that soul is sort of paired up together my 31 is a great car there's no soul in that car no character but the 24 soul and character